things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings. He made their glowing colors, he made their tiny wings. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The purple-headed mountain, the river running by, the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, he made them every one. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. He gave us eyes to see them, and lips that we might tell. How great is God Almighty, who has made all things well. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Let us pray. Christ has entered not into a sanctuary made with hands, a mere copy of the original, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. The Lord be with you. And also let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire through our brother, Jesus the Christ, who is with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it he who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. 
Let us read Psalm 66, verses 7 through 18, together. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You have brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. Our second reading of the day is from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life-giving God. Amen. So, we are with John and his disciples again. In this work of John, he is inviting us like the disciples, to hear Jesus' affirmation that Jesus will be with us, that even when he is gone, he will still companion with us. He will walk along the way. He will be in our times of trouble and our times of joy. That this comforter, this paraclete, this spirit of God that will be given is the one that will help us to continue to know that we are in unity with God the author of life, with God, the spoken word that came to this world and touched people and healed them, made them walk, made them see, and rose from the dead in Jesus, and who continues by that giving of the Spirit comes to us to abide with us, not uh, so much externally, but within us in our own soul so that we can be still and know the presence of God now that's an extraordinary thing to claim. It's not really the claim of other religious communities. But it is a Christian claim, and it's a radical claim in the world that we can know directly our God and God's presence with us. The stability that gives us is enough to face the challenges that are around us. Life's full of changes, but the changes going on right now have many of us wondering what things will be like and how will they be and when can we can we just take these off and forget about it but we can't but what the gift of jesus spirit gives us is the ability and this is what we have to teach from parent to child 
from senior member of the community to younger member of the community is that the ongoing life of God is there for us to lean into, to lean on, to be friends with, to trust it, the presence, and to actually pull on it in prayer, in our conversation, and in how we look forward, how we make decisions that believe that love is really what the world is about and how we can be that love, even when things are chaotic. So in John's work here, we're headed to Thursday. This coming Thursday is the Ascension, the day we celebrate that Jesus rose to heaven. 50 days after the resurrection from the grave, Jesus ascends into heaven to be close to God, to make sure that we know God's love's pouring into us. And the paraclete, the Spirit, comes then on Pentecost. Wouldn't have been lovely to be open on Pentecost. On death, just because we're not here? Is the Spirit not with us? It's not a historical what if. It's a historical fact. The what if is what if we fail to live like the Spirit abides with us now? Then we're orphaned. We're, we abandon God with us. God won't abandon us. God will not walk out on us. God will not close down the school and say, hey, too bad about you. God will continue to teach love in our lives all the time. But it'll be to us to join hands, to join our hearts with God's presence so that we can continue to trust and teach it to one another. There are a couple things I want to lift up practically. First is the cover of today's bulletin, which, excuse me, please take the time to look at it. It invites us to be the change you want to see in the world. Now, to my understanding, this quote came from Mahatma Gandhi in his nonviolent effort to transform people who are oppressed into free, self-determined people. It's an inspirational statement to me from a Christian point of view because it invites us to trust the Spirit to be with us, to have the capacity to transform things that feel broken, desperate, fearful, into things that are hopeful, loving, and transformed. Another thing that I want to lift up, recently one of my favorite artists died, not as a result of COVID-19, but I just heard of it recently, Bill Withers. He has, well, amongst the many songs he has, there's one that I've used, particularly when I was working with high school students, called Lean On Me. I'm going to invite you, this Sunday, uh, the sixth Sunday of, of uh, Easter, uh, to about four o'clock, look up an edition of that song, Lean On Me, that you would like to uh, listen to. And then I'm going to invite you, wherever you're at, to sing it. And so as an act of community, wherever we're at, we'll know about four o'clock this Sunday, we're singing Lean On Me. And listen to the words of the song. John could have written them into the gospel in Jesus' words for his disciples. Lean on me when it's weary. Lean on me always. But we can lean on each other. The best we're making phone calls. I'm making phone calls. We're taking care of the pastoral needs. People are being fed by the good work of this congregation. And others are getting their housing secured. And then, it seems to me, Everyone has had, that I've talked with has had a pretty good attitude about getting along the way it is. But at four o'clock, let us do this sort of silly exercise to know that somewhere else in my community, my brother and sister is singing this with me and we can lean on one another for the glory of God. to God in the highest and peace. 
grace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. O oh God, our companion and our comfort, you remind us that though separated, we have your love and the love of all in our community. We praise your name. For this earth in its beauty, we praise your name. For the wisdom and commitment of leaders, we praise your name. For those with birthdays, Nicholas, Logan, Eric, Andrew, Katie, and Andy, we praise your name. For those with anniversaries, Peter and Ida, and Jason and Julie, we praise your name. You are the source of solace in every need. For those who are sick or injured, Andrea, Mark, Mary, Sheena, Fritz, Jim, Jan, Sienna, Matthew, Daryl, Doug, Diane, Anne, Susie, Chris, Michelle, Greg, Maudre, and David, and those in continuing care. Come to the aid of all who suffer, especially we pray for those throughout the world without access to health care, sanitation, 
or the ability to quarantine. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for those who mourn, Lord, hear our prayer. Give your grace to all we name before you. In a Jonathan. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. What we have asked for actually may we obtain effectually. In the abiding presence of your spirit, continue to fill us with your life that we may see your goods in the world and the deeds we are called to touch. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As I've said before, in this season, we invite you to continue to remember our ministry and our mission here, and please continue to contribute to support that work. There's a great deal going on, even as we're not able to gather. And hopefully, as we continue to walk forward, we will soon know a way that we can be a gathered community once more. Thank you. And now in the words that our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray God's blessing. Through the gift of the Spirit, the abiding love dwells with us within you, a constant companion and a source of joy and hope. Trust that presence. Be joy and offer hope. And may we continue to be the risen Jesus in this world. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Where 
in the Holy Spirit makes a dwelling. Alleluia! Alleluia! Let us go boldly from day to day doing what God created us to do, fed by the absolute and unfailing love of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.